Here we go. <laughs> All right, ready when you are. Yeah. I'm Lauren McTighe, SHC's Nature Experience Director, and we are here at the SHC Community Farm to help you move better in nature. Come on. Here at SHC, we have long-term lofty goals. We're not short-term thinkers, and we're proud of that. We conserve land so that it's protected for generations to come. In the same manner, I want to help you conserve your body so it also can get out into nature with generations to come. Today we're going to talk all about your feet. In this short video, we'll learn all about how to hike better with alignment. If your feet are happy, so are your ankles, your knees, and your hips. By adopting just a few of these movements and exercises throughout your hike, you can not only help your feet, but your whole body. So why are feet so important? The way the foot interacts with the ground is the first point of contact for the entire body. It affects all the muscles from there up. This is why we start with the feet, always. Better movement in the feet equals a happy body. By adopting some of these exercises and movements I'll teach you today, throughout your hike, you can help not only the health of your feet, but also the whole body by moving more of your muscles. Let's have a moment to talk about shoes. It is really hard for all those bones and muscles and nerves to have a chance for movement when they're stuck in a shoe. All our ligaments, bones, and muscles that are in our feet, they need movement and texture. Our shoes make the texture of the ground completely flat, which limits the movement of your foot by nature. It also doesn't help that all of our access to nature usually is completely flat too. Sidewalks, paved trails, and even heavy traffic nature trails. Flat shoes on flat surface doesn't lend itself to movement of the small, tiny bones and muscles that need it. Switching to a shoe that has more bendability allows your foot to bend and move with it. And every now and then, ditch your shoe altogether. Positive heeled shoes shift the body's weight forward. Your pelvis should be stacked over the grouping of muscles that can bear its weight. When the hips are forward, the tiny toes and bones and muscles in the front of your foot have to take the burden of the weight. And also may be a contributing factor for issues such as hammer toe, plantar fasciitis, and neuropathy. The weight of your body is represented by the string when you're wearing positive heeled shoes. Stacking your weight over your heels allows the weight of your torso to be supported by your skeleton. It's hard to get your pelvis in place when your positive heels are pushing your hips forward. Just saying, it may be time for some new shoes. Wearing positive heeled shoes has been shown to shorten the fibers of the lower leg by 13%. You can counteract that with a calf stretch. Place your foot on top of something that's higher than your heel, and then go ahead and step forward. You're gonna shift your weight back, your hips back, so they're right over your heel. And then just wait for 30 seconds. And then when you're ready, switch your foot. It's time to flop the flip-flop. I know, you love them, and trust me, I'm a huge fan of sandals too, but get it back for them. Flip-flops cause your toes to work hard to keep the shoe on, which leads to over-tightening of those little toe muscles. Give these guys a break and get a back for your flip-flop. When you're hiking, one thing you wanna make sure of is that you step up properly. One way of doing that is making sure that you're pushing down through your heel. Cause if you're not, you're gonna end up jumping up with your knee pointing in. So instead, bring the knee out and push down through your heel as you lift up. The best way to strengthen the ankle to make sure you do this time after time is something called a yogi toe lock. You're gonna push your big toe down, your pinky toe down, and try to lift up through the arches of your foot. When our feet are in shoes all the time, they don't get the mobility they need. And so one way of doing that at home is to put balls underneath your feet to make your foot kind of round around it. Or you can also use rocks that your little cousins painted for you to do the same thing, or even better, get back into nature barefoot. When you get home from a long hike, best thing to do, take off your shoes, flip your heel, over your other knee. You can always stretch this out if you need to. Bring it in and try to lace your fingers in between your toes. If they've been in hiking shoes or in other shoes all day, 
This gives it that varying motion in between all of your metatarsals. You can squeeze it, move it back and forth, give it a little extra love. <laughs> so let's sum it all up. Your body's muscles need to adapt to these new situations. So you need to do the exercises as well as the alignment. So you want to make sure to do these stretches and exercise throughout a hike. It's great if you do it in the beginning and the end, but it's even better if you're doing it during. Lastly, look towards nature. I can't imagine roots of a tree being bound to a small space the way we do shoes to our feet. Let your feet go free and use them to help you connect with nature for years to come. Perfect. Good. Awesome.